Hey y'all, it's uh, Stephen Van Camp and Lewis here on a wonderfully cloudy day and uh, we're getting into the, uh, the height of our wet season starting it. Uh, I suspect that uh, everybody out there in YouTube land will probably start hearing about Texas flooding here in April and May, but uh, for now, we just got a little bit of rain and, and some clouds, but we've got a pretty nice setup for some good floods. Uh, today, in fact, the, the soupiness uh, of the, the humidity that's kind of set in has really made the, um, the pests in gardens. So if you're like me and you have all kinds of veggies and, and cool stuff, you're, you got to worry about pests as well as if you're growing out uh, or your orchids outside. Uh, and I, I put my, um, my Cattleya not Walkeriana uh, pendent, excuse me, not pendent of uh, Kenny outside just to get some sun and, and some some rain and uh, it's it's now covered in bugs so I, I was hoping to show you up this beautiful clean white flower and uh, instead what I'm going to show you is is a bunch of thrips and maybe some cucumber beetles and how they don't really bother the plants whatever species it is doesn't seem to bother my plants I only see them this time of year on on flowers that are outside and I guess this year it's it's on Kenny typically it's on my certipodiums and again I don't treat for them because they don't bother the plants but uh, anyway I'll show that to you in a second and I also want to show you uh, the Phalaenopsis Sumatrana that I got at uh, in a popka from Mike Mims a couple weekends ago hopefully the blooms are going to be a little bit more open they're just they're kind of cupped right now uh, so I'm going to show this I'm going to film this in a couple days and, and hopefully they'll be more open to show you. And actually before I show you the flowers I want to say that you're going to see the same shade structures that I had last summer uh, that kind of led to the really some major burning of my my plants. Uh, and this year what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a shade set up. So right here you can see oh, that's an artichoke that I planted in the fall and it's gigantic already but here I'm going to move this little uh, movable fireplace out of the way. I'm going to get this guinea pig hutch out of the way and then move uh, this goal, soccer goal here, back over there where it belongs and create a, a shade structure made out of um, conduit pipe. And so it should be, so I'm, I'm just over six feet tall. I want that shade structure to be eight feet tall so I can, I can clear, I can walk under it easily. Uh, I'll have all my cattleyas under there, and then I'll have all of my catacetums hanging down from the sides. And I'll make a I'll build video. So my next video, I'm hoping to, to be able to put that together and show y'all how, uh, how I'm doing it. Uh, but anyway, today, let's take a look at uh, lots of thrips, thrips on, on Kenny, and then take a look at thrip-free Phalaenopsis sumatrana. So this is where I'm temporarily holding my tallest cattleyas and as well as uh, having Kenny there hanging down uh, Kenny's mounted on a piece of choya wood and from here oh it's like a beautiful white flower but as we get closer you'll see that the edges are a little dark um, so this flower is a little old it's been open for a couple of weeks now but I suspect that you can see all those little creatures moving across uh, the flower there and you can see I saw a, a cucumber beetle the other day and the cucumber beetles are the are gonna be the ones chomping holes in the side here let me see if I can zoom in without making anybody seasick so you can see these little things crawling all over this flower and you know I call them thrips but I don't actually know that that's what they are they're moving real fast so these might be, you know, the thrips that I'm used to that cover my certipodiums don't typically move this fast. Let me zoom back out. There we go. So I, I don't really know what they are, but as you can see, they're they're living on there. I can I can see little tiny things flying around as well. So maybe there aren't thrips. Let's see if I can get them to to move a little bit more. But anyway, so. If you are freaked out by bugs, this is probably not a video for you, but it's not something that hurts the plants. I, I, like I said, I, I see something similar to this every spring on my certipodiums. 
Maybe it's the same things we're seeing now. Maybe it's not. Here's another, it's called a flea beetle. Flea beetles are, are notorious for eating veggies. So this thing is attracting flea beetles, cucumber beetles, thrip-like creatures, and uh, it does smell great. And no, I'm not gonna treat this at all. Um, I, you know, I'm not trying to show this flower. I'm not trying, the, the critters don't seem to be punching holes in the leaves or the roots. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, you know, let nature do its thing. Hopefully the, the predators will move in here uh, and, and start eating these. But it's just kind of a weird thing. I figured, figured everybody out there in YouTube land will be interested to see this. And maybe you have seen something similar on your plants. And if you have, I would love to hear about it. All right, so here is the indoor cabinet. And I was kind of hoping that this one would have opened up a little bit more. The, um, the Phalaenopsis Sumatrana. You can see it's here. So this is Sumatrana, which is a species um, closely related to Zebrina, actually. I was talking to my friend Dimitri, who I go to for all sorts of Phalaenopsis questions. And he actually doesn't know what the difference is between Zebrina and Sumatrana. So um, this is actually, before I show you the flowers, that, as you can see, are not that far open. I had taken an electric soldering iron and just simply punched holes into the side of this pot to let more air flow. And I did that because, and you can see there on the bottom as well, and I did that because uh, Mike Mims was thinking that um, this is a plant that needs a little more um, air around the roots, and that's why he was unable to grow it well. And of course, Mike Mims is who I purchased this from. He's the owner of uh, Blue Ridge Orchids uh, in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. And so it stayed kind of wet. It stayed wetter than I wanted it to. So I've simply just pulled it out and I'm letting it dry. So it, you can see it, it's been out of its pot for a couple days and I'm just letting it dry. So it, it feels um, squishy, uh, a little more wet than I would want it to be, I think, but it, it's drying nicely. I'm kind of bummed that the, the flowers haven't opened more, but you can you can see what they're starting to look like. And I'll post a photo here of the Zebrina that I had before, which was absolutely beautiful. So I'm really hoping that the, when these open up and um, the color sort of gets, uh, you can see the blotches there that are on the petals and sepals. I'm hoping that they're a nice red color like I had for the Zebrina rather than sort of a, a brown, but um, we'll see. Uh, like I said, I was hoping that this would open up a little more, but um, it seems to be doing well. This is uh, one of the the plants that I got from Afri Orchids at uh, the Apopka show recently at the AOS members meeting. And then this is another one of the plants that I got. Oh, I'll move my hand there. Uh, and it seems to be doing nicely next to the other plant that I got from Afri Orchids uh, a few years ago, which this one is uh, a Sertorchus. But anyway, uh, that's, that's my update for today. As I mentioned earlier, the next update that I am hoping to do will actually be uh, a sh uh, the creation of a shade device in my backyard. So uh, hopefully it'll be an interesting build video. It'll be the first, first time that I've done one of those, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Talk to you later. Bye.